All right. Uh, evening, gang. So um, I've not got long to do this, but um, this was brought to my attention yesterday evening by Ahmed in my um, Discord group. And I've been watching this stock today or this SPAC today. And I thought I'd come and do uh, a live just to talk about what's going on because the questions will be asked and the comparisons are going to get um, leveled with AMC and GME from this year. And I'm sure that a lot of you guys uh, will remember that because it was one that I commented on a little bit um, and it has been a bit of a roller coaster for investors. So for those of you who don't um, know what we're talking about, we're talking about the Digital World um, Acquisition Company. Um, it's a SPAC, which is behind um, Donald Trump's Trump Media Technology Group. Now, I am going to try my best, my my utmost best, to ensure that I keep this um, as non-political as possible. But I think because of the deck and the way this has been positioned, there is politics in this anyway. So I'm not too sure whether I'm going to succeed um, in this, but I'm going to attempt to keep it as non-political as possible. So if you are watching this, um, if you do have questions, feel free to pop them in the in in the chat here. Um, and yeah, let look, let's just get into it. So first and foremost, I think it's really important that we need to remind ourselves of the fundamentals and things that you're looking for when you're investing in a business, in a direct stock, as it were. Um, so what some of the things you'll be looking for, you'll be looking for um, fundamentals around financials, the business, what does the business do? Are they making money? So on and so forth. Those are the kind of things that you really should be looking for when you're investing in a company. Now, the Digital World Acquisition uh, Corp, so the ticker is DWAC, um, is basically a SPAC. Now, if you don't know what a SPAC is, maybe do a little bit of reading on that. I might do a separate video. We haven't got enough time to go into it in this particular uh, stream. But with a SPAC, um, it's a vehicle to take uh, companies and get them to have an initial public offering without going through the of the in initial having to build a business and all of those kind of checks that accumulates money to take a business public. This is what we're seeing right now. Now, I'm just going to show you um, the chart for this stock because if I'm honest, it's crazy. It really, really is crazy. So if I just share with you this, so all of this is off Yahoo Finance, okay? So this SPAC started off really all the way down here. And at the moment, yesterday it peaked at, I think about $170 or so. It peaked at yesterday. It's now down to about 103, but it's only, this is literally its second day trading. So overall it's up 130%. It's up 59.22% right now as of just today. So this is a fast moving stock, something that is being traded quite heavily. Um, and because it is a SPAC, um, it is low float, meaning that there are a, a low number of shares actually available for people to purchase and to actually hold. Now, if I talk about fundamentals, we talk about is a business making money? Um, do they have a marketplace? That kind of stuff. Those things are fundamental things. As you, if you look on Yahoo Finance here, we can't really see anything at all in terms of financials. There aren't really any at all. You can see trading volumes. You can see some of the peaks, but P ratio, earnings per share, you don't have any of that right here. And if you go into financials, there is nothing. This is pretty much a new business. So I think what I want to do is kind of get into maybe a little bit about the actual business. This is the investors kind of like pitch deck, the company overview that was actually produced. Um, because if you are looking at buying this stock, I would hope that you will go and do this kind of work beforehand. So you're literally going to go find this research about the business and you're not just buying something because it's trending on, on Google or trending on Twitter or trending around the pub. You're actually doing a little bit of a, of a foundation. So what is this all about? So this is uh, the Trump Media Technology Group. Now it's called the, com well, the platform is going to be called Social Truth and you can actually go and sign up. I don't know if we can do this in the UK, but certainly in the States, you can actually sign up to actually download and partake in the app a bit later on. But this is kind of just an overview. So this is what they're saying. So T 
TMTG will fight for the First Amendment protection and freedoms of all Americans, protect a democracy and defend against uh, defend capitalism. Now, this is really been interested in terms of the vision because this will be translatable to uh, what true socials are going to be. So TMTG aspires to create a media powerhouse to rival the liberal, liberal media consortium and fight back against the big tech companies of Silicon Valley, which have used their unilateral power to silence opposing voices in America. It then goes on to talk about, um, you know, Facebook, Twitter, and others who began to obviously shut down uh, Donald Trump's uh, social media uh, presences back in January. Okay, so we all kind of know that if you follow the politics in America, you kind of understand where this is all essentially coming from. So that gives you an overview of what it's all about. So you've got in here some clippings around, you know, freedom of speech, so on and so forth. You've got the bands in here as well. I think this is, if you're looking at it from a business point of view, so you wanted to know what a business is all about and what the size of the market is, who they're challenging, uh, where they hope to operate, uh, the kind of companies that they hope to compete with, this is really what you'll be looking at. So market opportunity. Now, it's interesting because it's it's true social. And I, I think when you get later on into this, you get into the impression that they're going to break off into different segments of the business. Um here they've talked about disrupting big tech. And the ones that they pointed out here are Twitter, Facebook, but they've also put in here Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google as well. Now, for truth media, where they're talking about, you know, trying to equalize the voice, I guess, in the mainstream media spaces, you can probably understand and probably fathom that there'll be a little bit of a push and they can quite happily, I, I would say, compete with the likes of Twitter, maybe Facebook, but Facebook is so large and Facebook do does have its own issues, clearly with the whistleblower coming out. But if we go all the way down here as well, we can also see, have a look at a corporate overview and this further then breaks down what the company actually hopes to do as a business. So on True Social, we're looking at Twitter and Facebook as being their main competitors. Then here around the news uh, cycle, they're looking at Netflix, Disney, CNN, Heart Media. I don't know how they're going to fit within this right here within Netflix and Disney. I think Netflix and Disney are more entertainment more than more than news or anything. So I can see where CNN and the Heart Media would come into it, but I'm not sure about this right here. And then there's obviously a third spin-off um, which will which talks about more tech. So you know Stripe, Google Cloud. A, a AWS, so on and so forth. The rest of this really is there's a lot of a, a of a political t uh, slant to this. The way I would kind of um, I don't know explain this is not only is it a pitch deck for for potential investors, but it's also a pitch deck to um, people who feel that there is a so a, a social media or media bias. Um, in the United States. And I think that that, if you look at it from a dispassionate point of view, you step back, you could kind of see how that would be true and how that sentiment would carry through the American population. I mean, how close was the election? How much of um, a protest was Trump able to roll up in the aftermath of the election and getting the election certified? So there is no doubt absolutely no doubt, 100%. And we are probably seeing this in the actual numbers that are being delivered in terms of the performance of this uh, SPAC right now, that there is huge support for what this business is aiming to essentially do. There is no doubt in that. You can see that in, in the share price right here. I guess where I'm coming from, and what I wanted to talk about in this video is that if you are the uh, kind of person who wants to be involved in this and is looking at this as a potential buy. So i.e., is this something that could potentially put me in a position where I can earn a little bit of money? I wanna talk directly to you guys. And I'm gonna start here. First and foremost, this is not a company that is already in existence. Nothing is up and running just yet, as far as we're aware. So a lot of this stuff is coming down the track. We don't have a working business. We don't have a working business model. All we have at the moment is almost like a prospectus in a business. Now, going back to fundamentals, what you're essentially looking for as an investor in a business is a business that can potentially generate revenues in order so that it's profitable, in order so that it can actually 
benefit you as a shareholder in the actual business. There are no financials for this at the moment. So if you are looking at buying this, your buy will probably be on sentiment. And in answering, I guess, the question of, do you feel as though that number one, there is a problem in that space of bias media in the United States, first and foremost, you will answer either yes or no to that question. If your answer to that question is yes, the follow-up question will then be, okay, do you believe that the current company, so the TMTG, has the ability, the team, the know-how, the facility, the acumen, the skill set, and maybe the board members, the setup, to actually make a difference within that space? And again, harping back and reflecting back on the sectors that have been identified in that company overview. So having a look out on the true social side, Facebook and Twitter, looking back on the new side, targeting Apple, Netflix, CNN, and the other group, the Heart Media Group. Does this company have the ability, the skill set, the management board to be able to execute a plan that will compete and essentially thrive against the current status quo? The answer to that question will either be a yes or a no. Again, that's not for me to answer. That is for you to answer. This definitely is not a company that, based on the performance of the shares over the last two days, is being bought on fundamentals. No way. No way in hell is that happening. This is a sentimental stock move more than anything else that it's been triggered by hype by the fact that trump is now back doing something he has been talking about this for a, a while now since back end of last year he was he, he's been speaking about this so this is just the first um kind of steps to him moving to make this um real now, I will say that if you are looking at buying this, then it's obviously worthwhile also understanding or maybe doing a little bit of reading around the dynamics of how this might actually work. Now, clearly, there will be a big political um, political uh, fan base that would aspire to this. And if you look at the um, Trump fan base in America um, and you look at the kind of people that he would basically attract, there will automatically within that be within that demographic investors within that. You may have seen already over the last day, maybe today, that there will be people, special interest people, people who are fans of him, who really like what he does, that are buying, that are buying these shares and will be thinking, you know what, I'm going to hold on to them and want to, again, you know, prove a point against the establishment like we did with Jeremy and AMC, you know, going against the big boys, challenging the status quo, quo who will hold these stock, stocks for a period of time. Now, this is a low float company, as I already mentioned prior. With a SPAC, typically they don't offer up all of the shares available for people to purchase in one go. So there's the low float is as a result of that, which means that with low float, if you get a good amount of interest, then technically it is right that you see that the share price goes from you know $40 to you know $160, $150 with the demand and the volume that goes alongside this. Now, in order for a... <clears throat> Apologies. Now, in, for, in order for a stock to do really, really well, so for price action to really happen at a quick pace, you need a lot of media attention. This is now gaining media attention. So technically speaking, from where the stock is right now at $104, is it likely that this will kind of plateau off and start to fall off? If the media attention continues to drive over the next two, maybe three, four days, maybe even a week, depending on how long this goes on for, one could argue that it will give room for this uh, share price to increase even more and maybe go back up towards the $160, $150 a share. I've been looking at YouTube this afternoon and some people are saying that this is going to go up to $500. I think those kind of assumptions and assertions, whilst they're fine to make on YouTube, are a little bit dangerous because then you find yourself back in this environment where we were with JME, uh, GME and AMC, where everybody feels as though they need to YOLO into a stock in order to make a little bit of money. I think we need to be a little bit careful with that. This is a low float company. So yes, it might get to five, $600 a share, 
depending on media interest, depending on sentiment, depending on a whole number of factors, depending on, you know, who really wants to put some money behind this. But I think it's really, really important as an investor to make sure that you're taking your time to really consider what the business is actually doing and try and answer some really fundamental questions, really. Um, it's okay to put, go and put 100 quid into this, as long as you're okay to basically say goodbye to it and see that it might actually drop over a period of time. I mean, the people that are probably going to make a lot of money in this, and I don't think it's happening just yet, are the people who are going to be trading this, short selling this, and taking that option to be held. But if you are going to be buying this over the next, you know, two or three days, or if you are indeed holding this stock, um, I think you just kind of need to be a little bit careful and just hold your nerve and at least have a plan, please. If you're in profit right now, take profits and don't be afraid to take profits. Um, but I know that this is going to be a little bit of hype and I'll continue to track it. Will I invest in this? I'm not going to touch this. Um, it's nice to make money. It really, really is. But I'm not a big Trump fan uh, as a as a person. I know I said I was going to keep this political, but I think uh, non-political. But at the same time, I think that when you're investing, invest in along uh, the lines of your own beliefs and your own uh, principles is really, really important. So whilst this might be a great opportunity to make money if it does continue to run over the next two, three days, I'm not going to be taking part because I don't value that money that much. But I think if you're watching this and this is something you're going to be looking to consider, I think, you know, just bear those things in mind. And if you are in, um, just be careful, invest what you can afford to lose make sure you understand the risk. If you're in profit, take your profits and, you know, try and keep an eye on what's going on at any given time, just to make sure that you are, uh, you're being as cautious and as due diligent as possible. But ultimately for this, the fundamentals don't stack up. This is a sentiment-driven uh, stock play. Um, it will be interesting to see what happens with this stock in the long term. Will it come back down to you know the $20, $30 range, or even the $10 range? Or will it continue to trade up really, really high levels? Because let's be honest, you do have a powerhouse name, Behind this is Donald Trump. He has a lot of power. He has a lot of sway. He has a really, really big fan base. And in that company overview, I didn't show it, but it talks about his uh, the social media following and social media sway that Donald Trump has versus some of these big um, corporations like Facebook, for example. All those kind of things are considerations. They are miniature, minor considerations to the big picture though, as in, do they have the skill to set? Do they have the ability, the facility to actually make inroads against people like Facebook, Twitter, so on and so forth? So um, this is just a really quick live. I wanted to talk about it because I've been meshed about this today quite a bit. It was brought to my attention uh, yesterday evening. Um, so yeah, this is here for people to view. Um, I hope if you do get involved, just be careful. And I hope you do make money, by the way, um, if you do get involved. But there you go. I've got to take uh, a run to the airport in a moment because I've got to take someone to the airport. But guys, whatever it is that you do this weekend, make sure that you have uh, a great one. Uh, the video is up uh, for today. There's two videos today characteristic so but here we go i'll see you again on sunday i've got Ralik. we're going to be talking about bitcoin and what's going on with bitcoin at the moment and the future of bitcoin moving forward so join me then at 9 p.m on sunday catch you later on